Hello out there in uh, podcast land. Uh, welcome to episode four of uh, Steve Monison's podcast of No Return. Woo-hoo. And uh, joining me today is a um, uh, fellow No Returner, uh, Brendan Lowry. Uh, way past the point of No Return. Crossed that threshold a long time ago. <laughs> Just out in the wilderness, man. Just out in the wilderness. The concrete jungle. Right. All right. Now four episodes. That's exciting. Yes. Yeah. Four. This is almost almost a double episode. We have uh, mm-hmm. we've got uh, a two parter. I don't know how many parts actually because this is the second part of our last the last episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's in two parts. I don't know. Has math come up a w- come up with a way <laughs> to express that? I, yeah. yeah. Is there? I don't know if there are theorems or proofs that we have invented yet to figure out what part of this series of Hank Panky's soul that we're actually in. There are there numbers high enough to express this? Part? <laughs> like four factorial. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know a guy, uh, uh, Herman Nimoy. He might be able to. Uh, <laughs> He might uh-huh. be able to help me out here. <laughs> Herman would love, would like relish the chance to go <laughs> to go into Hank Panky's office. All right. So to set the uh, to set the uh, scorecard straight for those of you uh, keeping score out there. Uh, so we had had the uh, battle for uh, the soul of Hank Panky, the battle for Hank Panky's soul. That was last week, part one, and now we have part one A and one B. Again, math can probably do wonders with that, but. That's what we have. <laughs> do you, do you agree? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I concur. I'm just a, I'm simply a yes man on this team. So yes, Steve, that's that's what we have today. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's really diving into like the the inner workings of a character in a really fun and kind of uh, thought thought provoking way. You know, get. I, I think there's a lot to be said for someone who gets everything they wish for. And it's that whole, you know, be careful what you wish for. But I think there's so much truth to that. And we get to kind of examine that a little bit here. That we do. And to illustrate what we're talking about, let's go right into the first part. Part duh. two A. Duh. <laughs> part duh. Hot shots part duh. Where's, Hank Panky where, part duh. There's Charlie Sheen when you need him. Ah, oh, uh, drinking tiger blood somewhere. <laughs> Just guzzling tiger blood. So here we go. We'll see you at the intermission. Take it away. Oh, we have a new announcer with us this week. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Waldo something. He's uh, just a temp. Who needs his full name? <laughs> Who needs his full name? You know, you bring him in. You just you, you bring him in. You toss him out. That's just how it goes. That's this, this industry. They'll use you up like a like a snack wrapper. When you tell your friends, as you will, about this podcast, you said, "Yeah, they have." A Waldo something, <laughs> a temp. Yeah, well, <laughs> don't, but don't bother remembering him because <laughs> he uh, may or may not be back. So, take it away, Waldo. And here we are, folks, at the thrilling conclusion of the battle for the soul of Hank Panky. I'm your narrator, Waldo Slackman, filling in for your regular narrator, Mr. Carl LaFong. Carl is convalescing at the Santa Sharia Springs Wellness Center in northern Minnesota, taking a much-needed break. We here at Steve Monison's podcast of No Return wish Carl a happy stay. And a lengthy one, I might add. (laughs) I mean, Carl's a bit hysterical, don't you think? I don't know much about the healing waters of Santa Sharia Springs, but I'd say they'd better be f***ing miraculous to do that guy any good. (laughs) What? Just do the intro? Uh, Right. Uh, Sure. Of course. I'm right on it. (laughs) And so here we are once again at the Last Chance Employment Agency, right where we left off last time, as our hero Hank Panky is grilling social media geek Eugene Crowley as to why he and Fair Maiden Miss Amanda Giblets have brought the hysterical Mrs. Letitia Muggsy into his office, a woman whose prolific waterworks would make SeaWorld jealous. While Miss Giblets has taken Mrs. Muggsy to the ladies' room to dry up, we listen in as Eugene gets ready to tell the whole sorry tale. So sit back and nuzzle up to your favorite nuzzle thing because here comes the lip-twisting conclusion to the battle for the soul of Hank Panky. I will see you at the finish line. Well, you see, it's a bit of a long story. Well, what are you waiting for? Wink Martindale to say, come on down? Well, I think what you're referring to is Johnny Olsen's signature catchphrase on the Price is Right game show, 
Wink Martindale, on the other hand, is best remembered for hosting Tic Tac Doe from 1978 to 1985, where he, well, he may have said Tic Tac Doe with similar urgency. But if so, the utterance never gained any real cultural traction. How do you know all this stuff? You're unreal. Sort of like everything is starting to feel like at the moment, huh? What the? Y yes, Gladys? Your father told me to let you know that he's given you five minutes for this dream sequence. And after that, the time is coming out of your paycheck. What are you talking about? Well, do you see how it looks like you're about three feet deep in dry ice and uh, it looks like cotton candy is coming out of the walls? That means it's a dream sequence. Or a nightmare sequence. They only tell me so much. I'm just the receptionist. But aren't spectacular things supposed to happen in a dream sequence? I, I'm still just sitting here with Eugene. Uh, no, uh, my name is Erwin. But you corrected me and said your name was Eugene. It is. But because this is a dream sequence, uh, your dream sequence, you get your wish, and my name is Erwin. You see? Gladys, this is the lousiest dream sequence ever if the whole point of it is that I get to call this dweeb Erwin. Have a little patience. Patience? Who has time for patience when I need to devote every second to building the personal empire of my future? What the? Hey! Hey, stop! What the? Oh, please, stop! I'll never submit 17 people for the same position again, I promise! Oh, I'll submit myself for the job! Oh, I'll wash cars! And quality base here. The eagle has landed. Oh, Hanky! Isn't this so exciting? I wait all year for the Hampton Classic Grand Prix, and now, having hired you to be by my side, I can't imagine anything more divine. What? I mean, uh, yes, of course. <laughs> Here we are, wherever we are, watching whatever it is we're going to watch. Ha <laughs> I'm a. Uh, I'm ecstatic. Yes, that is it. I'm ecstatic. <laughs> oh, Hanky, your sense of humor is absolutely divine. You'd almost think you were related to some, oh, some hideous Jewish person. <laughs> My God, where am I? I'm apparently at some hoity-toity horse event in the company of some wealthy, bigoted dowager. That's right, Hank. Gladys! No, it's Nicki Minaj. I thought I'd try out this tired old white lady receptionist persona I've been working on. Well, Nikki, what's going on? This is your gigolo fantasy. You're being paid $2,000 a day plus expenses to keep the widow Egmont happy at this fancy schmancy Hampton's horse racing hoo-ha. But I can't do this right now. I'm in demand. People need access to Hank Panky. And besides, I have a Manny Petty at four. Sorry. You only have so much say-so in how these things play out. Oh, Hanky, darling. The horse we've bet on is called Pietro's Poultry Private. <laughs> what? We bet on a horse called Pietro's Poultry Private? Oh, don't let the name fool you, you scrumptious love boat of a man. He's the favorite. I've bet your wages for the entire week on Pietro's. What good God? Oh, look, Hanky. Pietro's waving at the crowd. Hi, Pietro! <laughs> Isn't this exciting? Exciting? Uh, what? And since when do horses wave? And the horses are at the gate. And they're off. Whoa, start, folks. This is bound to be a classic. Yes, I said bound. And in case you missed it, I said bound. Oh, he said bound. Thank you. Oh, I wish I had some rope. Why? And they're coming into the first turn, and it's Sylvester's satin sheets in the lead. Sylvester's satin sheets? Ooh, that name puts a jiggle in my bustle. Oh, what, am I sitting on a crab? Something just grabbed my butt cheek. And at the halfway marker, it's Sylvester's satin sheets by two lengths and gaining fast. Lengths? Ew, he said lengths, Hanky. Oh, this is why I came to the races. I so do absolutely love lengths. Oh, my lord. But wait a minute, folks. 
Hawks, it looks like number TD's naked ambition is gaining on the field. Naked? Oh, Hanky, naked. Oh, but it looks like Pietro's poultry private has apparently pulled off lane. But here comes Golden Boy. Golden Boy. Oh, it's a sign. Ooh, it's a sign. Hey, wait up. Where'd my clothes go? Ooh. Now that's more like it. Who needs clothes when you're with me? I may have a few miles on the odometer, but my tires are spanking new and ready for the fast lane. Gladys! Yes, Hank? I don't like this. Not at all. Not one hanky-panky bit. This is not how it's outlined in Gigolos for Dummies. And I listened to that audiobook ten times at half speed. I know that, Hank. The entire office knows that. You tended to loudly repeat passages you felt was significant. At any rate, time for a scenery change. Susan Lucci! Hi, Hank. Oh, now we're cooking with Propane Plus! Oh, which reminds me, I have to get my propane tank filled before I host the annual Meet Hank Panky Barbecue. Wow, I have always wanted to meet you. Uh, maybe not exactly like this. Oh, do you mean your birthday suit? Well, here. My god, this suit! It's... it's our money! Oh, it must have cost a fortune! Money is no object to Susan Lucci, or to Erica Kane for that matter. But Erica Kane isn't real. She was a character you played. Is there a difference? And as far as Erica's concerned, she's ready to offer you the world and more, Hank. You, my delicious dreamboat deluxe. Oh, my lord. We are in serious dream sequence country now. All you have to do is ruin every woman in this town. Uh, what? Yes, my priceless Merlot of American masculinity. Don't worry about the means. I will provide you with all you need. All that matters is that you and I will be the king and queen of a metropolis made of money. You and I will make love on a bed stuffed with hundred dollar bills. Gee, that's an offer you don't get every day. Uh, but to yet be honest, Sue, I've got a bit of a pinched nerve. So what do you say to a regular mattress and we just look at the hundred dollar bills? How how dare you mention anything regular? If you are born for greatness, as I certainly am, there is nothing regular about anything I do. Right, right, I can see that. But hey, Sue, baby, I think I'm gonna need a little time on this. First, I'm not exactly gaga on the ruining people proposition. Generally, I try to improve people's lives. Silence, you craven fool! Whoa, oh no, that sounds like something out of a 50s B-movie horror flick. Like. Didn't Vincent Price say that in The Tingler, which is a personal fave, by the way? Oh, Hank, you are my life's greatest disappointment. I'm going to take that as a compliment. I mean, how many people can say they're another person's greatest disappointment? <laughs> I hate you. It may have taken me 11 tries to win a daytime Emmy, but it'll only take one swing with a statuette to disfigure you forever. Oh, is that so? Hey, Gladys! Can we end this? When Susan Lucci starts threatening disfigurement, the show's over. No one walks out on me, Hank Panky. Now where did I put that statuette? I think I might have left it in the pool room. Ah, here it is. Uh, Gladys! Okay, dream sequence has about five seconds left. Say goodbye to Susan. Ah, Sue, honeycakes. You may curse me, but I still feel we could have made beautiful music together. That is, if only I could play an instrument. Okay, there, there's that red, there's that red line that means we're, we're the cooking hunt with for red recorder. Oh, I'm giving away a line from the. Uh, ah. Oh no, that was in the the cooking. We, they with just propane. heard it. That's right. We're cooking with propane. Propane, propane plus. plus. Brought to you by Propane Plus. Yeah. You want to blow up your cookout because you hate your family? Get Propane Plus. <laughs> I would, but uh, <laughs> there's no propanity on the show. <laughs> That was, that's an excellent. That is an excellent fun. Yeah, you need to rip, get a rip shot on that one. We need to hire. Let's get that Waldo, that Temp Waldo in here. Hey Waldo, bring bring your drum kit in here, Waldo. 
No, he didn't. Oh, he didn't bring his drum kit. See, this is why we don't hire Tim from Tim's from that agency. Uh, I'll have a talk with Waldo. Uh, I, think, I, think I, may, I may go uh, oversee his uh, his conclusions. His uh, his, his, like, his concluding remarks. Oh man, it's conclusion. I was like, was this Big Brother speak for like? Are you gonna execute this guy? <laughs> go oversee his conclusion. I I. Uh, Boy, meet Hank got to meet Susan Lucci. Oh, can you believe it? Um, Talk about dreams coming true. Yeah. But yeah. like I said, like I was kind of hinting at before, you know, sometimes your dreams turn into nightmares. Mm -hmm. They're not exactly what you wanted or they don't manifest the way you think they will. Absolutely not. Mm -mm. You know, you just mm -mm. don't think of being bludgeoned with a daytime Emmy statuette. Oof. You know, that's, I don't, I don't fall asleep thinking those thoughts to you no no thankfully i, I sleep very peacefully so, i guess the real question for me is what what does hank learn what does hank learn from this from this dream sequence that he's gone through you know what does he what kind of character truths has he settled on about himself the uh the gigolo fantasy mm -hmm. being that he listened to the uh not all not all it's cut out to be <laughs> No, mm -mm. no, the, the, the Widow Egmont is not exactly uh, another one you don't go to sleep thinking about, dreaming no. about, yeah. So mm -hmm. I imagine, you know, maybe he has a greater appreciation for his current life situation, the mm -hmm. position he's in. Maybe he's been reinvigorated in his mission to better the lives of people all over the world. I think that's fair. I, I think hope. that's fair. You know, maybe. Yeah. Or, or... I don't know. I think sometimes a dream like that could make me want to disprove my dream. Okay. Well, we, we maybe we'll see uh, Hank actually out at the Hamptons. I don't know about the wig Widow Egmont or the Wiggle, the Wiggle e Egmont. <laughs> Is that the Widow? Is that the Widow Widow? <laughs> widow. The widow Widow. Oh, yeah. One foot Widow. <laughs> <laughs> One foot. It's a, it's a very tiny, tiny Widow. <laughs> <laughs> the world's most Widow Widow. <laughs> Widowing a wooden spoon. <laughs> widow, the widow widows, whimpering. <laughs> the widow, the widow widow whittled. A black widow, widow, widow spider. <laughs> a black widow spider. <laughs> a black, black widow. Black. A black. <laughs> black, 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 black. I'm, I'm going to go with what his tank's immediate response is that uh, he wants to help people. That mm. He comes back a little bit more dedicated to helping people, which I think we will see mm -hmm. in the uh, part 1A squared, or B to the third that's coming up right now. Buckle, uh, yeah, buckle up for math class, kids. This is Steve Monson's podcast of No Return. <laughs> okay, so sit back and listen. No, sit back and enjoy. Sit back and prepare yourself. <laughs> Okay, don't sit back. Tuck your head beneath <laughs> your knees and... and... So here it is, the finale, the grand finale of the battle for the soul of Hank Pecky. I'll see you later. Mr. Panky, Mr. Panky, uh, Mr. Panky uh, are you there? Mr. Panky, are you okay? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, I'm fine. <laughs> I was just having a dream sequence. A dream sequence? Yes, and let me tell you, they're not all they're cracked up to be. If anyone asked you to nod out and partake in one, I'd give it the old, whoa, Nelly. Though meeting Susan Lucci was sort of a bonus. <laughs> what? I didn't say anything about merry-go-rounds. Wait, does Susan Lucci do it to you as well? There, there, Letitia. It'll be okay, just like we talked about. You're right because there's nothing I have in the pipeline that even remotely involves carousels or retired soap opera stars. Okay, give me the skinny. Let me explain. It's like this. I guess it all goes back to the May promotion where I was offering a tie with a Boston cream pie pattern for anyone who liked our Facebook page. Let me explain, Eugene. Uh, sure, okay. I guess the pie tie promotion was not essential information. I only was able to give one away anyway. You see... Mrs. Muggsy's husband has worked at Pie in the Face all his life. He was a custard runner even before his 10th birthday. Now that's impressive as far as custard runner lore goes. And his accuracy with throwing a pie is in the 98th percentile. No one else has ever been above 96, even with his new leg. His new leg? 
The company sent him on a trip to Australia to drum up new business. One prospective client insisted they go feeding crocodiles in shark-infested waters. Well, uh, one thing led to another, and Mr. Muggsy ended up losing his entire left leg. Ugh. If my mother, Daffodil Panky, has taught me anything, it was never to mix my sharks with my crocodiles. Please! And so here's Mr. Muggsy finally adjusted to his new leg with the double ball-bearing titanium-reinforced knee joint he's always talking about. <laughs> oh, here we go again. I'm sorry. It's just that he's so proud of that knee joint. He's such a proud man. And so you see, Mr. Panky, uh, that's the problem. Eugene, please. Okay, I'll go back to listing the pie ties on eBay. As a lifetime employee, he was offered a cushy post in the new cat video company where he really didn't have to do anything. But he refuses to work there. He says it's a disgrace and cats shouldn't be made to perform in internet videos. I once had a pet turtle, Jimmy. Ah, and if anyone ever forced Jimmy to put on a skirt and do the Watusi... I would have ripped the guy limb from limb, shoved all his teeth back into his head, doused his bones in kerosene, and, well, you get the idea. So I know how your man feels. And speaking of old steps of steel, where is the geezer in question anyway? Why isn't he here? Because he's too proud. (laughs) He keeps vigil at home with his cat dressed up in a feline British infantry uniform. There's even a checkpoint outside. I love this guy. Call him and get him into this office right now. He's got all the phone lines. Whoa, then how about a text message? He doesn't text. He's too proud. Okay, uh, how about if I send over a messenger? Too proud. Uh, carrier pigeon? Proud. Uh, Two cans and a piece of string. Proud. A squadron of paratroopers. He's blocked the chimney. Oh, well, I'm beat. If Santa can't get in to see this guy, then what can I, Hank Panky, do? You're our last hope. Uh, We need to find Mr. Muggsy a job. And look, we have a bid on one of our pie ties, a kachinga rooney. Hmm, but wait. Oh, they're only offering 17 cents. Plus, oh, we pay the shipping to Zambia. That is so far. Even though it's a hot job market, I'm not seeing a ton of opportunities for a one-legged pie tosser. He's not just a great pie tosser. He knows everything about pies. How to bake them, the ideal condition of the fruits or nuts that go into them, how to get the flakiest crust. You name it. If you Google pie master, Mr. Muggsy is the seventh most popular search result. Well... That is something. Ranking 7th on Google is impressive no matter what. You know, I have a cousin who's ranked 9th in earlobe relaxation services, and he's raking it in. Who knew there were so many problems with earlobes? You know, hold on, let me check mine. Oh, 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 say they are feeling a bit worried. Oh, my sweet little earlobes. It may be time for a Hank Panky Spa getaway day. Mr. Panky, focus! Whoa, yes, wow is right. I've never known you to be so forceful, Miss Giblets. But you're right. Yes, okay, focus. Thank you for spiriting my ship out of the sea of self-absorption and steering me back to the dock of, well, well, the the dock of a one-legged pie tosser. I'll get your man Muggsy work. You can count on it. Oh, thank you. All right, then. Hmm. Ah, I got it. Just give me a second. Hello, Larry! Ha <laughs> ha, you old swordfish in a sousaphone. How are things down at the wildlife park? Yes, this is Hank Panky again. But you know, I don't call you unless I've got a whale of a prospect I think you'll go ape over, and I'd be lying if I said anything else. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, okay, Larry. Jeez, jeez, cool your jets, bro. I just thought you'd appreciate a little wildlife park humor. Uh, okay, I'll come right to the point. What I'm calling about is that sous chef position on the animal dessert team. Is it still open? Because I've got a guy here who's so good with desserts, he could be Julia Child's love child. Uh, what? You filled the position on Tuesday? Well, saute my swizzle stick. We just can't seem to hook up. And so do you think this guy is going to work out? Uh-huh. Uh, the cheetahs really dig his strawberry shortcake, huh? <laughs> well, if tastes change, you know how to get a hold of me. Ciao, Larry. Oh, I hate that guy. So what do we do from here about Mr. Muggsy? We are going to find him a job. In the meantime, 
I'm bereft to say that I must move on to my next client. Uh, uh, I don't know if bereft is the optimal word choice there. Can it, Eugene? Okay, I will, uh... Can it? Uh, yes, of course. I even, you know, huh, really have an affinity for cans. You have my number, Mr. Pinky, and I'll send you Mrs. Muggsy's contact info. Let us know when something comes up. Will do, Scout. Come on, Eugene. Let's get back to the office. Uh, sure. I mean, uh, yes, ma'am. I mean, yes, Amanda, ma'am, or uh, Mrs. Ma'am. No, that's, no one has ever said that. That's not right. Thank you, sir, and bless your soul. Hey, someone has to be Hank Panky, and that someone just happens to be me. I'll be in touch. <sighs> yes, Hank. Send in my next client in five minutes or so. I just need a few moments to process. To process what? Well, well, well buckle, up, buckle up, Gladys. Up, Gladys. Kind of a long one. Well, how about that, folks? A dream sequence. And then the whole thing with Mr. Muggsy, oh my, I tell you, I loved every second of it. Unlike some other narrators who go bonkers at every new development, narrators should be upbeat, charismatic, and enjoy the work they're doing. Like me. I was just saying to my wife this morning how this was the greatest gig I could possibly imagine. Why, uh, I just- uh, Waldo? Uh, oh, hi, Steve. Well, I didn't know you were in the uh, booth. Yes, uh, and thank you. Uh, that'll be all for today. Oh, well, I really do love the work. If there's anything I can do to help the show out or anything, like, uh, is your kid having a bar mitzvah? I'd be happy to narrate the video, no charge. My kids are grown, but, but thanks. Oh, well, then are they getting married? I, I narrate one heck of a YouTube wedding reel. Thanks again, but, but no thanks. Well, then maybe how about, uh, I don't know, a cat? I don't... <sighs> well, I better be getting back to Studio A, because, uh... I bet you Brennan's already riffing on Hank's life progress, and I don't want to miss any of that. Well, I think that we, I think we saw a sort of rejuvenated Hank Panky. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, we were at a place where he, he really started to kind of, I think, sour a little bit on his job, his station in life, and now sees that all that other stuff is just sort of, I don't know, smoke and mirrors in a lot of ways. That he has this idea about what he wants to be or who he wants to be. That's just. Uh, a little unreal to him, and I think he has that answer now. Absolutely. <laughs> That's a funny idea, an absolutely man. Not even, he doesn't say yes, just always absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> we, gotta roll, we gotta roll this new ad campaign. I'm thinking maybe before Christmas, absolutely. So that, that Chinese place we were from last week, absolutely. <laughs> it's a great, absolutely man. <laughs> We absolutely have to wrap this up. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But we have uh, a whole new group of folks uh, coming up next week or two. Uh, get ready for the boys from Bay Ridge. Ooh, Ooh the boys from Bay Ridge. So, uh, thumbs up or thumbs down on uh, Waldo? Oh, you know, I gotta say, uh, very. He really kind of carved out a new identity for the announcer role. So I gotta give him thumbs up. He's very, very enthusiastic. I yes, mean, yes. He just will narrate any video that I want to make. Also, a bold move, really putting out the uh, personal problems of his predecessor. <laughs> so really, I mean, this is a bold tactic. You know, I mean, if you're gonna really bury someone, you know, <laughs> dig the hole deep enough. So I gotta, I gotta really tip my hat to that tactic because the man wants a job. You know, the man wants a permanent gig. Let's, let's make sure. I'm gonna make sure there is zero chance that guy comes back. Whew. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, you are now officially at the point of no return. So that all kind of piles up to see you next time. And uh, yeah, tell your friends, share this. This is all over the place. Absolutely. Uh, uh, how about a sound effect right here? Yeah. <laughs> just, just me being thrown into a well. <laughs> Bye-bye.